All right, now I'm here with my man, Zach. What up, Zach? What's up, Jim? What's up? And we have a new number one. Oh, my goodness, Captain Marvel. And it is the start of a brand new Captain Marvel series, obviously, because, you know, we need another one. You ended up having Kelly Thompson's ending at 50. Now we're going to get a restart here or at least a new number one from Alyssa Wong. And uh, I don't think this is going to go very long. I don't think this is very good to start out with. That's my opinion to get things started. But it is Captain Marvel number one written by Alyssa Wong, art by Jan Balzadwea, colors by Brian Valencia, letters by VCs Ariana Mayer. And there's a lot of people who don't like Alyssa Wong or they end up saying that Alyssa Wong has some tropes that when they're writing an issue, things always seem to happen. Self insert characters are one of the big things. But for me, having read things like Dr. Afra or even spirit world at DC, my whole problem with Alyssa Wong is the idea of not centering on the main character. The main character gets pushed aside a lot by these added in characters and i did not think that that was going to happen in the first issue of a series you get into this issue and by the end i get the same feeling that i have with say a hawk girl over at dc and that is not a good feeling because it is the idea of yeah carol captain marvel kind of getting pushed aside for a new character and the problem is The new character is pretty damn annoying. Yeah, she's pretty annoying. Yeah, pretty annoying. And really, we don't know much about her, but here we go. We start out with Carol, who has a new look, a new outfit. That's just like said as if it's going to be some big wow moment, but it really isn't when you see it. It, It's okay. Yeah, it's, it's a fine design. It's okay. Looks like maybe she will be on the cover of Sgt. Pepper's down the line. I don't know, but... She ends up where there is a big attack going on, New York City, and she ends up facing this new villain, The Omen, who looks kind of cool. You have this back and forth, but the play of this winged, you know, almost like demonic looking villain ends up just being a siphoning power type deal. And you never really get what is going on here because Carol is like, at first it felt like, the, the omen was playing off of being able to take kinetic energy and throwing it back. But then Carol actually says that and punches her. But the big play is, oh, my God, she's siphoning off all of my power. She's grabbing me. She's pulling me through a portal. Oh, my God. And just disappear. You end up having that big moment of Carol getting grabbed. And you end up having the omen say, I'm the omen. And this is the first of things to come. And you, you're perfect. Boom go through this crazy portal and then and that's five pages right i mean it's kind of a cool setup you're wondering okay what does this mean what's going on but then after five pages of carol fighting the omen we legit get 10 pages of this character yuna who isn't captain marvel just to point that out this is a captain marvel book so we get through 15 pages of a book we're gonna have five pages of carol 10 pages of this Yuna Yang, who seems to be the self-insert extra character that's thrown in here because, hey, I don't really care that much about Captain Marvel, it seems. Now, I will say one thing is, if you're going into this, maybe somebody said to Alyssa Wong, listen, people don't really like Carol. You know, people don't really love Captain Marvel, so try to do something with that. And so you add this extra character, but this extra character is, like we said, you find her annoying as I do. Yeah, I uh, know. She came off as totally annoying the entire time. Yeah. She sits there like, do you like when you're reading a character? Fun facts. I don't like falling from a building and dying. I'm like, is, is this what we're getting here? Is this the whole play of this? And you even like, what do we know about you and a- Anyway, in this, first off, she gets a call from her mom. She gets annoyed. Like, even then, it it doesn't really make you like her. But she's a thief, we find out. She's breaking into an apartment that is a weird play because she's breaking into an apartment. Later on, she says to Carol that she steals magical things, right? She likes to steal magical items. She sells them to get some money to get through college. That's supposed to be the way that, oh, well, at least she's a go-getter. But 
she she's a thief. Yeah, I, I think any of these magical items she got would probably go for, what, hundreds of thousands? I think her college should have already been paid for if she is a thief. See, I think that we read it wrong. I think she's actually trying to buy the college. Like, it's <laughs> like maybe. I don't know. But here's my play here. And she walks in, and you end up, oh, my God, the omen is on attack here as well. So when Yuna walks into this apartment, Knowing that Janice Val is there, but she's going to go, you end up having the Omen come in once the Negaband is trying to get the Negabands. Now, the thing is, the Negabands, you can't really get unless you kill Janice Val, cut off his hands, things like that. So what was Luna going to do? What what was her plan to get these Negabands? Because that kind of gets lost in the shuffle here, only because... You end up having the bands done, and you see the omen seems to just put a spear right through Genesville's chest, which then allows Lona to pick up the bands. But was she going to be willing to cut hands and kill somebody to do this? Because if that's the case, that's pretty, pretty evil, right? I mean, yeah. that seems to be the setup. She She gets the bands, and it's one of those, like, luckily she was there. Or else the omen would have gotten them. We don't really know what the omen's going to do with this or whatnot. But you then end up having her running from omen. She puts on the negabands and clangs them. It ends up making them fuse to her. And as we find out, gives her a connection to Carol. And it, it's a little bit forced. It's a little bit yeah. ill explained at first. And what it seems like Alyssa Wong wants to get is that classic. Marvell Rick Jones combo. I clank the bands. I go to the negative zone, and you keep switching back and forth between them because that's what happens here. But that is kind of a neat play. I think that when you get an, an issue, a number one like this, you really should set your tone with the main character first. You really, because I'm telling you, when you ended up having, say, a Jed McKay do the Avengers, which me and you will eventually be reviewing on the podcast, the idea where people actually said jed mckay did a good job on the first issue because i don't mind captain marvel i don't mind carol because he ended up setting tones with her and and the rest of the team but in this you get so little of carol and more of this yuna and the tone to me is just annoying it ends up being kind of annoying deal it could play off well with universes you know not versus but yuna and captain marvel going against each other you know in the mind and whatnot but at the point, I just like, what's going on? And and as she's falling to her death, she has a fun fact, which, you know, grates on my nerves. But then she clangs, you know, the negabands again. And then she switches with Carol. Now, the only thing that you can think at this point is when you had the omen grab Carol through the portal into the negative zone, because that's where they're going to switch back and forth, like the classic deal of it. But... It just ended up, I mean, I'm telling you, at this point, I was a bit, com- were you confused? Because I was a bit confused about what the yeah. hell, anything of what was going on here, even yeah, well, though it wasn't that complicated, there wasn't much going on. Yeah, well, when uh, Omen had gotten Captain Marvel earlier, we never saw where they went, what happened to them, etc. Then all of a sudden, it's just like, oh, I'm back magically again. And it's like, well, what the hell happened? It's like, oh, she was in the negative zone. And it's like, well, what since does that, how, why weren't we told that earlier? And we weren't told it just to, it, it seemed to be the play of, oh, we, I'm going to wait so when the negative bands get clanked and whatnot but some people going into this not knowing nega bands negative zone like <laughs> i said yeah jump. and i ended up like the big Cree war deal back in the day and a lot of the early stuff with rick jones and marvell i actually really did like we ended i only did it because we ended up doing our patreon show where we have a lot of the big events and crises. That's one of the first ones at Marvel. So we ended up doing that. That's why I know it. But even then, when I saw this, I, I thought, well, that's fine. But again, the thing that I liked about that old stuff is that I liked Rick Jones. I like Rick Jones and I like Marvel. So it was that going back and forth that either or you kind of get something good. All right, Rick's here. Oh, man, Rick. And, and that points Rick's like a sad sack about it and things like that. But even so, I still like Rick Jones. So when you get this, all I could think of is I hope that we don't get a lot of clanging because I really don't want this Yuna. I don't really like her so far. I may grow to like her. But again, this is a Captain Marvel book and you're almost setting up to 50-50. You're not going to get Captain Marvel. We'll have to see. Again, then Captain Marvel, when she shows up again, 
there's the omen again. So she's fighting the omen once again, and they just start beating the crap out of each other. And the big play in something like this is that idea of switching back, and you can't switch back and forth between a time where, oh, my God, if Yuna comes in here, she's going to get killed. Oh, my God, here. You know, it's easy enough for Yuna if she's in big trouble to to clank them, and then Captain Marvel comes to kick butt. But the opposite play would be bad if this omen ends up, you know, having Carol by the neck and then Yuna switches in. That's big trouble. But again, I want more, especially a first issue, to set up Carol and how Alyssa Wong's voice for Carol goes. And I can't say that I really know that yet. But while this is all happening, you do end up having the big kaboom. You end up as, again, the omen's trying to suck power out of Carol. There's the big kaboom and they switch again and it just keeps going back and forth with this. And when you end up having Yuna come back, now she's coming back with a a magic item, but it's not really (laughs) so ridiculous. It's not even magic. And then they're just talking to each other in that it's like a magic crowbar type deal that she has by the end of this. Like, I just brought it back from the negative zone. And then they just start yapping. About what this means and what happens with the clanking and oh my god this and I'm just at the end of this I'm not even interested in this book after one issue because it's just not that exciting it's not actually yeah, getting no. me invested it's it's making me all I could think of the whole time is I hope we don't get this you know all the time and that's bad for a first issue now again it might be the play of oh my god i want more carol but i don't even know what she's doing with carol really this seems to be an issue number one issue setting up a way to get another character involved in this besides carol and i think it's just a misplay in my mind and then at the end you do see the omen where as because at that one point when carol kicks in she wants to maybe try to save Genesville. Oh, my God. And when you end up having the omen go away, she spirits away with Genesville's body and then ends up because remember, it was weird, too. At the beginning, when she when omen pulled Carol through, said, oh, you'll be perfect at this point. Well, I didn't really want you. But but why you already had Carol earlier? Why were you doing anything? You were go- She was going for the negabands. I can only imagine maybe to connect her and Carol. And unfortunately, Yuna did, but it was a weird play. But you have siphoning power, but then she's getting negabands. Now she's happy to have Genis Vell and gives him a wish that gives him his hands back, but he's still got a big hole in his chest. I'm like, what is going on? What's happening? And then at the end, it's just the omen saying we have work to do. And that's it. And I just, I thought that this was a big misplay. I thought it was a big misplay, mainly because by the end, I don't really care about any of the characters in this you know besides just even carol also this yuna and it just ended up thudding for me the art's okay it looks kind of like house style i I wasn't that impressed by it but i didn't hate it either it's just typical marvel art for me that's what it is it just looks like standard deal but if i was going in it you know maybe and every writer has their fans if you're going in and you get the oh listen long's on this oh cool and you go you're, you're gonna get what you expected You know, this reminds me of a Alyssa Wong book for the many books that I've read of hers. Now, if you are somebody who is worried, you're going to get what you expect. (laughs) Because, again, it's an Alyssa Wong book. So it depends on whether or not that's your thing. That's fine. But by the end, I thought, I don't feel like this because of this Switch deal, the Negabands and this Yuna character doesn't feel like it's going to be any bit important. That it's going to actually matter by the end, and I'm I'm happy to just get my Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers in the Jed McKay Avengers book, which I hope that gets better too. But at least I'm getting something there that seems to matter and mean something. This just feels like it's just set up to just be a mini series to just have a little bit of fun while. You wait for the movie to come out, but what would you give this? I'm just gonna go with a plain five because I mean I didn't hate it, but I didn't like it. Uh, I'm not really intrigued in anything that really happened in here. The the biggest thing I got out of it was when uh, Captain Marvel caught the building, and it wasn't even that she caught the building; it's the fact that she laid it down the street in Manhattan. I was like, "What the hell are you doing? That's a skyscraper. You can't just lay it in the street." Yeah, maybe it's so, a transforming skyscraper, and then Tom Hanks can come out and say, "I I don't get it." 
Man, that'll be. Awesome. I don't know. That that's the biggest reaction I had in the whole issue, though, and that's that's a bad thing. So I'm just gonna go plain five. Just and I'm you know. glad, and I I just to center on something you said earlier, the idea that you don't have a background with the Negabands. You don't have a background with, say, a Genesis Bell. Some of these things that we're doing because we're just starting up the Marvel podcast again, and I'm grabbing a bunch of people who helped me out on the DC podcast recently. So a lot of the people are going to be more DC-centric fans just coming over in a new number one. That's always cool. So when you jump into this, and I hate the idea that people think well, he, you know, I'm not saying you exactly, Zach, though. Are you, know, you sure, if, if people want to throw shade at Zach, that's fine. I mean, he does love Declan Shelby through uh, I the I don't. Moment. I just had a huge in, rant about in, him. <laughs> in this, though, you can't expect everyone for a new number one. That just says Captain Marvel to actually understand or know everything about the Negabands and the stuff from past Captain Marvel. So you should a- at least introduce them in a way that everybody is on par and up to speed on them. I just got lucky that I ended up liking that sort of deal from the past. But there might be a bunch of people who aren't, and it might have been a better play to maybe have this first issue centering on Carol, maybe dealing with the idea of the Negabands. Maybe there's some way you get Janice Vell involved at first, and then by the end, it looks like, oh, my God, this new character, Luna, is about to steal him. This omen's going. It just seemed like Alyssa Wong really didn't want to waste any time getting to this Luna or Yuna yeah. instead of taking the time to introduce her version. And I say her version of Carol. I don't mean that this is a retcon. I mean just people could get the the feel for what she, how she writes Carol and how she goes through that. But by the end, you really are more like this is a Yuna book so far, and it's very, very odd. But I'm yeah. going to go 5.5 uh, really? again okay. because I, I, I don't mind the Negabands. I think that's a pretty cool idea, but not a, again, not a cool idea for a number one issue. It might have been able to set that up down the line to add that in. It just feels weird. It just feels yeah, weird overall. And, and I'd uh, like to hear. What, the main reason I asked you to check it out, the solicit literally said, oh, this is a brand new number one, brand new team, brand new status quo, brand new everything, right? And it's like, oh, we're going to deal with the Negabands and Janice Vale. And I'm like, who? I, I, I don't know who they are. <laughs> like, I know they're Captain Marvel related, but I don't know anything about them. Yeah. And again, there's the past Captain Marvels and things like that and all that thing going in. But yeah, that's not a great thing to just throw at people in a new number one. But here we are, maybe, after this deal of being a little confused, uh, we can go forward. But even at the end, I'm like, the cliffhanger of, oh, no, she has Janice Vell with a hole in his chest in this deal. I'm like, I I really, I hate to say it, I really don't care that much about (laughs) that. I don't either. I really don't. So we'll have to see. Some people will disagree with us, I'm sure. But 5 and a 5.5, but that is that. Oh, well, there you go. New number one, but. Again, when people, and this was announced, I didn't hear a lot of people excited about it. A lot of people were rolling their eyes of another new number one at Marvel. They keep, you know, pushing them out. So there you go. We'll see how it ends up. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution.